Hello everybody. In this video we will learn how to create a modeless dialog and how to interact between two windows, the modeless dialog and the view window. Also we will learn how to draw in a view some simple text and uh, rectangle because we need to <coughs> show the text into the in the view. We will be creating a very simple text editor and we will use a find uh, dialog to find certain text in the uh, in the document so that's the aim here <coughs> we will also learn how to send and post messages uh, between two windows so let's first see what is <coughs> what is the difference between a modal dialog and a modeless dialog in my previous video I already made couple of videos about modal dialog and we can see the modal dialog this is a nodal, uh, normal notepad a uh, program Microsoft notepad and if I go help about there is a modal dialog here <coughs> modal dialog means that I can't I can't uh, do anything under beneath it so I can only do something here uh, but I can't go to the menu notepad menu for example or edit this text here. I need to press OK and now I'm back here. The find dialog here is a modeless dialog, meaning that I can do something here <coughs> and then I can go here and do something here and the menus and everything. So they are kind of independent windows. So this is what we will be creating in this video and um <coughs> this is the focus creating this video. We will also be drawing the content of the text into this white window, but that's not the main thing really here. The the find dialog, uh, modeless find dialog is the main main thing in this video. <coughs> so let's start doing this. And um, first, we will need to create a single document uh, project. So I will move this a little bit so we can see how I create it. So I go here, new, and then project. And now I need to move it back. Oh, well, here it is. And <coughs> from here we will choose MFC app. And I need to scroll down and find it from there. So MFC app is the way to go. <coughs> I will place a name notepad x kind of extended notepad then press create it's gonna be a single document because we're gonna have only one document like like the normal notepad it has a one document and um, here we don't need these panes so I remove them and finish okay and in this um, project, I will be using <coughs> a couple of global functions. I already created those global functions before, so I'm just going to include them into this project and just use them. So new item, uh, sorry, existing item. Uh, it's the global functions CPP and H files we are looking for. So add add hates file and in the source section I'm gonna add the cpp file oh no mistake delete and now I'm gonna add it existing item and cpp file goes there I'm gonna place it at the top here back top okay <coughs> so here we go so just shortly I will explain what we have here we don't really go to details here because um, these functions are not so important at this point but what what is it that um in this project we will be using the standard string c++ standard library string because that's a powerful string mfc has a c string what they use even back from 90s but <coughs> it's not so powerful and it, it's not so good in my opinion so I want to use the standard library string as much as possible when we are drawing in the window and they are asking C string 
then we will convert this standard library string to C string as needed. So that's why I will have two conversion functions. We can convert a C string to standard library string and standard library string to C string as needed. And then we have this function which can calculate um, <coughs> pixel size of the text on the view. So like when we are drawing a text on the view, this function will calculate what is the size, the width and length of that text. And again, we don't need to know the details right now. There is a website if you want to go and look at look at the explanation, the Microsoft website, which explains what are we doing here. And one more thing, we have this function called read lines from file. This is my function, which I created and it's here. This is uh, simply <coughs> reading lines from the file. So maybe this is a this is a moment to show how the final result will be look like it will look like. I because I already created this project before. I'm just now repeating it uh, step by step. So <coughs> I will now run this um, ready ready um, executable program. And here we go. So this this is the target what we are we, we are trying to do. So uh, we can open uh, one one file from here any text file uh, let's open that one so this is how it's gonna look it's gonna it's gonna read from the file it's gonna read all the lines so line by line it's gonna read all the lines and we will place them in a vector actually so this will be the first element of the vector this will be the second element of the vector and so on they will be in a vector in this program and then we have this nice um, modulus find find uh, dialog which which we will be creating as you can see it's very closely what what a notepad has i just added a couple of more buttons here nice buttons here so <coughs> we can now we can search let's say i want to look where's the change so i press find and there it is so there's the red marker showing where it is and then next aha uh -huh, there is no and then i can go up up from there so i want to send the capacity i want i want to find the capacity there it is and uh, nothing else anyway and we can go to the up and start the search from the up from the top and if I say what can return going down ah oh, there's nothing <laughs> um, well we have a public there I can see so there is public there is public and so on good so this is the aim <coughs> so that's why that's why we have this function which is able to read all the lines from the file. So they will be stored into this vec vector which will be passed by reference. We, are, we, start, we create a um, file object, we open the file and then we will clear the vector which is passed. We will empty the vector because now we're going to get the new content to the vector, into the vector. Here we are checking that the file is opened successfully. If the file is opened successfully, then we will read the first line and we will add it to the vector. Then the while loop reads the next line from the file and we will add it to the vector to be the second element of the vector and so on. All the lines will be added into the vector. So let's start doing this and um, the way we're going to do, do it is like we can see from here uh, we need to implement a handler for this open command so because when we select this open from the menu it sends an open command to MFC so we can handle that open command in th in the docu document class in the document class and it's gonna call it's it, it's called unopened document and the way we can find it is we go here in the class view select the um, file uh, sorry the class we are interested in and here we select the properties and we go here and it's going to be the one of the overrides here the last section it's going to be override on open document and then just add it and there we go and we place the code here First things first, it, uh, 
when we press that open it will go here and this will be the file name we selected in that open dialog but this will be kind of c string file name so we need to be con we need to convert this one to our standard library string that's the first thing because we need to have standard library string version of this file name that's why i'm going to create one variable for it string call it file name and uh, <coughs> now we need to convert this one to standard library string so we need to use one of those functions and the correct function will be this one c string to standard library string so this will be the starting point i'm going to place it there and now this is actually a c c type of string it's a mfc c string kind of so i will first create the corresponding c++ version of that string and place it there actually i can use the new initialization brackets here why not and uh, <coughs> is that all good is that all good ha sorry the c yeah we need to include this file obviously the we are using the globals so we need to include that here at the top so i'm gonna say include global functions h and now <coughs> now it happened wow it works and uh, now we can use that read read function this one read lines from the file so i'm gonna place it after that the first one will be we need to pass the lines the vector where we're gonna place the result now the question is that where do we where are we gonna store the data where can we where are we gonna store the file the data of the file the lines <coughs> that's the question and i would say that the correct answer is the document because in mfc you st we store every all the data will be stored in the document and then the view just asks the data from the document and so on so this is the right place but we just need to go to the hates file let's add the data in the private section because all the data should normally go to private section we're gonna use here um, vector and string so include <coughs> include um, vector string so I'm gonna call it just the lines std vector std and the elements are strings the lines are strings std string and i call the vector i call just lines now later on <coughs> it's obvious that we're gonna need to access this lines um, vector because when the view later on will draw those lines lines of text we will need to get access to this but it's in, it's in a private section this is a document class and it's in a private section so <coughs> i will straight away create another function here which is const uh, <coughs> const um, auto and we call it get lines and this will return this vector but it will return it by const meaning that nobody can change this vector we don't want nobody to change we just want to just read this so const everywhere this one uh, promises that we, we are not changing it here this will not be changed and this one promises that um <coughs> the return value can't be changed so we put const everywhere here we don't want to change this we only want to read it let's go back here so now um so here we need to put that lines vector as a first parameter 
and the second parameter is the file name <coughs> which is here and uh, that's it so now it should be reading the reading the the file which we opened and let's quickly test that it works and there is an error and okay so this error comes because <coughs> because these globals these are not mfc files so that's why um we are not gonna like here in all these mfc files we have this include phg ph p sorry p h p c h files but we don't have it here because we don't need it because these are not mfc files so we need to tell the compiler that these are not mfc files we need we don't want them to be mfc files so not using precompiled headers they don't need that and compile <coughs> and um, when it's finished i will be putting okay succeeded now i'm going to put the uh, breakpoint here i'm going to debug this and i will show that it really works so f5 and let's select one of the files from here open and um, that one and now it's reading the files and I put the <coughs> mouse over that vector and we can see that there are 60 how many 65 lines and these are the lines and we can see that they are correct this is the content of that file clearly so that works it correctly reads those lines into the vector okay good start yes so the next thing will be that we need we want to show those lines in that white window that view in order to do in order to do that we need to tell the views that they need to repaint themselves they need to draw the lines the way to do this is that we need to say here update update all views this means that this document is asking all the views which are using it to update update themselves there could be many views which are attached to this document so this means that all of those views which are using this document class needs to repaint themselves okay so this one causes that it will go <coughs> to view views draw on draw function where we can draw something and what is that something well we start with simple things so we need to um, we need to get access now to the documents um, vector the vector which contains all the lines so let's see how we can achieve that we're gonna say that a document give me get what is it get get lines yeah get lines <coughs> so we're asking that please give me all the lines and I don't want to use this this is so this is the vector now for us here but it looks complicated we're gonna use this we're gonna use this vector many times in this in this section so I want to make a shortcut create a new name for this a shortcut so it's more simple so that's why I'm gonna create a um, another name for this using the reference variable reference variable can be used to rename variables so we are renaming this one to something nicer I'm gonna call it um, just lines the lines lines in the file that's it so now we can use this one instead of this one okay, let's go then we need to have a for loop to print each of the line so int i goes from zero from the first element of the vector and i is less than <coughs> the size of the vector how many how many lines we have the size is telling how many how many lines we have then plus plus i 
increasing the index by one so this is looping all the lines all the 65 lines now this one i want to make it nicer because it on each round when we come here checking this one we are as we are calling this function and asking the size again and again and again so that we don't do work in vain here i will create a variable which will calculate this size once and we will use that always after that so it will be const auto and uh, lines size so we will calculate once and then use it many times instead of putting it there i'm putting pressing it there and using it here nice now the next thing is that <coughs> next thing is that we need to we need to start printing printing the light it will it will be text out so uh, device context pointer to the device context and we need to use a function called text out this will print out text on the window the first 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 one is um, the x coordinate of the x position of the text let's start fixed zero first and then we need to have a, the y position now let's look at this how this thing works so if we run this now one more time so <coughs> if we look at this um we start from zero zero then the next line will be something like 20 uh, 0 20 sorry 0 20 so this begin line will be the coordinate the starting coordinate will be if we start from here well we start from here in this case but <coughs> if we start from from here it will be 0 20 this will be something like 0 40 0 60 and so on so we need some kind of <coughs> counter here which will go 0 20 40 and so on because we need to place the next line or uh, below the, the the line before that that's why i'm gonna create a variable for that next y we start from zero <coughs> and this will be always here and now we need to print the text itself now before I do that, I will create another shortcut here. Because um, now, if we want to get access to the current line in the for loop, it will be lines i. So this will be, when i is 0, this will be the first line. When i is 1, this will be the second line, and so on. But it's just how I do things that I, I want to, you know, have a nice name. So. Um, this is not something we have to do, but I'll just do it. So I call it just line. Uh, so current line. Current line. I just feel it's, it's a nicer name and it's kind of fixed. And fixed. Uh, we don't need to put that I there. I kind of feel it's a little bit more safer. Uh, this is a matter of argument, I guess. But <laughs> for me, this is a little bit safer than this one because if we put the wrong index here, that's the danger there, I, I see, but I might be wrong. I'm sometimes wrong. But okay, so now we can use this current line. This is the text, but if we remember from 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 the beginning that um, the text out is actually using C string. This is a um, standard library string, and now we are using C string. So we need to use the conversion function to convert it to C string. So using to C string. That's why I'm going to put that there. And it should all work now if I place it there. So it converts it to C string. Is it working? Um, oh, of course it's not working because I'm not including the H file. I made a mistake again. So <coughs> global functions. And now, there it is. Now it works. Let's now see. Aha, we can't see yet because I need to fix this one first. So the next y needs to always go to the next line after we print it. So we need to add something here. So let me add 20. Just try if it's um, big enough. 
so the next line will be 20 and line after that will, will start from 40 and so on I will compile and now we might see uh, first time the printing we might see the content of the file now on the white window let's see if we are successful so I'm opening the vector and there it goes nicely we have the first version here but there are a couple of things we want to improve here obviously first of all the font is not very nice we don't like this kind of font right and the second thing is that we want to have some kind of margin here because we want to later on we want to put that you know the mark when we are finding a line we want to put the red mark there so we need to have some margin that okay we want to start the printing from here oh let's do let's do those two things first let's change the font first okay um to create a new font uh, to use a new font we need to create a font first and i because it's a little bit typing so i've done it already so i'll just copy and paste it here so this is the way to create a font <coughs> um, and all these parameters my memory is not good I can uh, I can I can um, I can say here right now that I don't remember all these <laughs> there are like 16 of these but I think the point is that we need to go to the documentation and read all of these uh, whoever is using this uh, what are they they are quite easy things these things but th this is the main thing I guess and this one so this is the size of the font and this is the name of the font type why did I choose consolas? consolas I choose chose because if we go to tools and options in the visual studio I can see that there's consolas so consolas is this font what we are using in this editor so I want to have the same nice font okay after we created the font we need to select the font onto the device context so that the drawing the drawing context will use this font at the moment nobody is using this we just created the font but nobody is using that font so the way to do is that we call the select object this is an object it's a it's a drawing object kind of so we will select that and now it's there now now the now all the text what is drawn after this line will use this font instead but the thing is that in windows programming we can't select many fonts we can't create many fonts and select them onto the device context because the, there is a limit how much you can have fonts so that's why the way we do these things is that we when we want to use a certain font and draw text we will select a font and when we finished drawing we will select back the previous font font the font w the device context had before we use this font that's why we need to copy the old font and then at the end here we need to change it back to that font that's why I'm gonna copy the old font what was before this so I'm gonna call it old font makes sense okay because the select object returns the previous font it will set this one to be the current font and it will return the old font and we are storing it here and at the end here we need to select back the old font so that's why I'm doing it here then Windows is happy <laughs> Windows is happy and we are happy we get our new font and Windows is also happy I need to just select the old font back here and the other thing we want to do here is that it definitely works I'm not gonna run it now but it definitely works I'm gonna do straight away the other thing which was the margin um, so there are a couple of variables we need there are a couple of variables we need to create now in order to place the text correctly the first we the first thing we want to have is um, the space between lines That is the space uh, between two lines uh, when we go from top to the bottom. It could be zero, of course, and it will it will draw it nicely if we, even if we have zero space. But let's put a little bit space, like five pixels. 
Then another variable we need to have uh, to define the printing will be the left margin, which we were talking about earlier. Uh, let me put there 30 pixels. So it starts from 30. The left uh, text starts from 30 pixels. And um, yeah, let's use these two now. So I will. Uh, so at the moment we start always from zero. So this is the x coordinate and this is the sorry the x position and the y position of the text. So I will create new new variable here now. Const x position. So I call it just x position. Why not? So what what will be the x position? It will be the left margin. At the moment it's just the left margin, the 13. At the 30 pixels, sorry. Like that. At the moment we don't have any other rules. So it's simply the left margin. And how about the space be between the lines? Well obviously it goes to the Y somehow. And um, Well, it goes here because the this is the next y, so we need to put it somehow here. So it will be the text size plus uh, the space, the extra space between the lines. Now, obviously, this is not done perfectly. What is this 20? Maybe you're asking that what is this? Why did I put 20? That is a good question, and 20 is actually wrong. Um, <coughs> so let's fix this one now. What do we want here? Well, we need to go down the height height of the of the text. So if we are printing, for example, if we are printing a B, let's say BB. So we start from here, drawing that. Now we need to go to the next line here. So we need to go downwards the height of this font so that we can do draw next here. So in order to do this one, we need to know the height of the font. And that is a little bit more complicated. That's why we have this ready-made function here, um, which we're going to use, this one. So this function calculates the size of the text, the height and the width, both of them. Although we only need the height here in this application at the moment. So I'm going to call this here somehow. After the select font, it, it needs to be after the select font because the device context will be calculating that size. So this device context needs to have the correct font before we calculate the size. So we need to pass the device context first. And the next one will be the string we are measuring. But the question is that what kind of string we are measuring? Well, we're just going to put a random text there representing one line because we only need to know the maximum height which it can be. So I'm just going to place here random text actually, but uppercase, just in case that it will be definitely okay. So put random text here. And now this returns at the height and width size of this text. And we will store it into a variable, which will be called, <coughs> I use that one because it's exactly that one, and then I'm going to call it pixel size, there we go, nice one. So now we have the size, and this needs to be auto, I think, so we, we get automatically the type. Okay, now we know the height, very, very good. So now instead of 20, we can use the height, the real height of that text, which is CY. So CY will be the height of this text, the maximum height. Okay, it all looks good now. So the next uh, Y position will be height of the text plus extra space. So let's run it now and see how it looks now after these two modifications. Um, 
yes looking good now isn't it so nice font and it starts from the margin which was was it 30 or something okay um this video will be uh, sorry this this tutorial will be totally longer so i will i will make um separate parts so i will make part one part two or maybe even part three so this will be part one but before i finish this part one we will do one more thing which is the tabulator because we want to what we want it to look a little bit nicer nicer the printout just for fun like like if i open this um this is the, um class that declared dynamic should be should be more to the right so we need it's because there's a tabulator here and tabulator means that it goes more to the right uh, i will quickly some people don't know about the tabulator so i will quickly show what it is if i have here uh, text text and i press the from the keyboard you can press tabulator like this okay so it goes a certain amount to the right okay so this is what we need so if there is a tabulator we need to go right a certain amount so the text looks nicer like here we have a tabulator even here there's a tabulator here there's a tabulator here and that's what we want so how do we implement the tabulator well we need to know the double one thing we need to know is the what is the how much it pushes it to the right what is the size of the tabulator move so for that let's create a variable for that const int um, tabulators i call it tabulator size or length or whatever let's use 30 again seems to be a good value and now the thing is that um, how do we know that there was a tabulator? Before I ans before we answer the question, I will quickly show from the document that we really have that here. I put a breakpoint in the document where we open the read the files, read the file and read the lines, and I open this um, a class file h file. Now, if we look at this um, vector, there are 54 lines, and we can see that there is a tabulator, for example, here. After the class, we have tabulator here uh, at the index 9, here, and there's another tabulator here at the beginning, line 12. Okay, so we need to deal with these tabulators, and they are they are called t. It's a backslash t. That's the character, backslash t. let's do that now the question is that what if we have multiple tabulators like let's say we have car one tabula oh sorry <laughs> sorry uh, we have cars and this is one tabulator this is the second tabulator and we could have uh, even three i guess so what if we have multiple tabulators at the beginning so let's deal with that as well so this was a little bit, this is a little bit more complicated <laughs> c++ task that well, I can give it to you at this task, but how do you find how many tabulators is it? The way we can find how many tabulators there are at the beginning is that we can use a function called find first not of. Let's say we have um, like this. We have um, three tabulators here. And then we have some text here, like a car. So there is a function called... Um, function called find first not of and we are looking find first not of tabulator so let's see what this function returns first of all auto um, <coughs> um, uh, tabulator count let's see what happens here so this function returns the first character which is not tabulator so in this case it will be the index of that one so that will be three and three is the number of the tabulators so this is perfect in this in this situation the tabulator count is the return value of this one 
but this is not that simple what if we have like this so if we have like this this function actually can't find any characters any 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 non tabulators after this so it will return an error error return value which will be std uh, string n pause so this function returns n pause if it can't find any characters after the tabulator so that is that is that is the thing to understand here so that case needs to be checked um, um, differently that's why we need to have an if statement here that if if the count is not found if it's not found then we just need to say that it will be simply the string size A little bit complicated, but if we think about all the cases here, again, again, if it's like this, this one returns a three, which is correct. If it's like this, this is true because it it didn't find any characters after the t, and in that case, it will be the size, which is three, which is again correct. And if we have an empty string, nothing here, um, then um again um <coughs> it would be this one and size is zero so it's all all good and if we have something like this this is all again this is okay because um this is the first character and uh, that's zero zero so in all cases it works now so this one returns the number of the tabulators in front of the front of the string so now we need to add that here and the question is that where does it go to it goes to the x where is that x there is that x aha there is that x so the x needs to be moved a little bit moved here so it's the left margin margin plus the number of the tabulators multiplied by the tabulator size how much space each tabulator is and now we are placing that x there and now it might actually work okay just one thing i forgot here that when we are creating a font we need to delete the font as well and I forgot to delete it here, so we need to do one more thing here. We need to say delete object. Otherwise, there will be leakage, and that will not be good for us. So I will delete that font object here. Okay. And um, if I did all everything correctly, this might actually work now. So, thumbs up, and uh, let's hope that everything goes well. Aha, there's an error. Ah, yeah, because this initialization is very strict. Because there are different types now. I'm, I'm combining different types, so it's very strict. So, um, I can change... Um, so, this tabulator size is type of what? So, it's a const int tabulator count is that size t which is unsigned integer so this is the problem this is an integer and this is an integer but this is not an integer so if we just change this one to integer it should compile static cast int we don't have any problems here because the tab count is always going to be small so converting this one to integer is not a problem because int is always enough and compile okay and let's see opening that um, class file Ooh, it works so now we can see now that uh, the tabulator is correctly so there's a um, there's one tabulator here this bracket 
there's one tabulator and there was two tabulators here so it all works okay so this video is becoming quite long so i'm i'm splitting these uh, these the parts so this is the part one and and we will continue now uh, in, in the next lesson we will do part two where we will be creating that find dialog box which will be a modeless dialog box that will be great fun and uh, the actually the main thing will be happening in the next video thank you for watching and uh, hope you see in the next video thank you bye